to let what us do know. What you have uh, against knickers made entirely out of copper? I mean, it's time we address <laughs> this. <laughs> and welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly show to cover the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos, and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Rust has made Linux a second class citizen because we're a bunch of cheaters at least according to the developer, and the virtual link. You know it, you love it, it's no more. Thanks, Valve. Thanks for that. It's an emu stravaganza tonight on LGC. You might even win a flightless bird. And we talk about a game that does not have mouse support. I repeat, no mouse support. This is important, you guys. No mouse support. Proton gets a version bump. All the while, the community has officially started uh, creating its own compatibility layers for Steam, and Godot tells us part two of their efforts to live long and prosper. Improved multi-thread support for everybody. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Old Man Ven, apparently Blind Man Ven, hitting the microphone right at the beginning. Uh, joined every week uh, by the man himself, uh, Captain Screw Symmetry. He is anti-symmetrical tile man. That's one short his face. <laughs> and the uh, one person other than me who knew what a trolley was, uh, one Pedro Mateus. Hello. They're going wild, ladies and gentlemen, together with you, Shat Realm Dynamic, joining us live, helping us form Cocaine Voltron. Yeah, YouTube, we don't care anymore. We got Patreons. Yeah. So. We, we never cared. <laughs> uh, dude, I've gotten... All right, uh, I'll go first. Uh, we'll, we'll play catch up, see what's going on. Um, all right. Who else has YouTube channels? Because they, they've been pushing the YouTube studio beta, like fisting me with it. They're like, no, you got to use it. Every time you launch it and it goes to it and they have a nice button at the bottom. I'm like, oh, if you click that behind the curtain type stuff and you click on that and it's, it gives you a survey to fill out. It's like, why do you not love us? So you can go back to the one that works and it has like a checklist of all the shit that's wrong with it. And I'm like, all that. And they're like, thanks. Then you click on to go to creator studio and it takes you back to the beta. <laughs> oh, yeah, no, because they give you the opportunity yeah. to tell to tell them what you hate about it. Mm -hmm. And then they're just like, well, too fucking bad. Yeah, okay, here's the puzzle stuff. Turns out, if you go into settings, it's in there. Not where you would look. There's an option to tell it to F off. <sighs> mm. You do. Opt uh, in, man. Dude. Opt in. That's not how the G rolls. Uh, so, uh, outside of that, I, I'm in the middle of like transferring domains. Everyone, I love doing that, like changing your fucking DNS provider. It's like launch codes A and like unlocking that and putting that back in, making the lock. Then crossing your fingers for the, you know, sometimes 10 minutes to three to five days it's going to take. <laughs> uh, D DNS zone transfer wait times. Yeah. So if anything, like if our web zone goes weird, wonky, poof, it'll be back up. That, that's what, the thing. What, was, was, was that what had to do with the host gator outage or is this no, entirely no. Really? This is This is like moving over. I'm, I'm going to get some of that cheap, cheap at wholesale, like at cost Cloudflare. DNS ah. goodness. Plus, we were already on Cloudflare, and it makes sense to have everything in one place. Seems legit. Seems legit, legit. baby. So, what have you been up to, Jay, baby? I got I, I got an Amazon shipment that I neglected to use through our affiliate link, which you should totally <gasps> use, you guys. Do this, man. I know. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm an awful, awful monster. I uh, know. I got to that, Frank? <laughs> yeah, I know you would cry if you had eyes. I, I feel you, bro. Man, I saw Jeff's co or Frank's cousin on another uh, on another YouTube channel. It was kind of weird. Um, but anyway, but anyways, um, yeah. So I got I got a OnePlus Seven. It's well, it's well, a nice all phone. Right, hang on, no, we got a better story. What was it like? I wanted to be like a poodle shaving. No, <laughs> no, like so 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 straight up. There there there's there's a there's a YouTuber Jeff Cavalier. He does like. Um, he does like uh, exercise videos to like explain how to do basic movements or how to like fix problems you have with uh, like uh, hip impingement and whatnot. And he and he pulls it, and eventually he pulls out this thing. And I'm like, oh look, it's it's one of Frank's relatives. It's like this big anatomy skeleton that he's like smacking around and like making do shit. I'm like, okay, okay, Frank. Frank, I, I I guess I guess the the Frank clan is kind of like the Coppola clan. They're everywhere on the internet. Well, I keep Gary whenever he's over because he's fully articulated. And for everyone's own peace of mind and sanity, he's not allowed in the studio. 
Yeah. <laughs> probably, probably for the G- Gary and Frank have some issues that they really need to work out on their own time. Skeletal family shit, man. You don't want to be within a mile of that. What's up? Uh, have you even said what you're up to? I yeah. have not. <laughs> I'm talking about Jordan. Mostly, I just I, got I, a I, thing I, I, off I eBay. <laughs> It's one of those uh, SATA to USB 3 adapters. Does that work? And they, yes, they do. yes, it does. Uh, and I've been going through these uh, laptop hard drives and basically figuring out what to do with them. <laughs> There's a few. Wait, wait, don't, don't leave us I, hanging, I baby. What, 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 what are you going to do with them? Are you going to make a giant raid of laptop hard drives? Um, if I can find the, uh, the hardware to actually <laughs> mount them on, maybe. <laughs> You just need more duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> you know what else needs more duct tape, though? Oh, what, what needs more? The horse. All right. It's it it's it's falling apart. It's losing consistency. We gotta we gotta wrap it up. Maybe put a little hat on it to make it look nice. Cause it's the steamer. All right, so enough, enough of this personal life bullshit. Here is what you're actually showing up to Linux Gamecast week in and week, in, week out you, to, to find out about is hats on Team Fortress 2. Nah, man. Yeah. I just watch this show to feel better about my life. That also also true. Anyways, so we talked we talked about it last Probably. week. There was a bit of a, a little bit of a screw up when it came to uh, hat tra- or the TF2 hat crates, where you could actually reliably get some rare hats, and there was a bit of a hubbub. Apparently, people were worried that the this critical eco- economic center of the internet, TF2 hat trading, <laughs> is going to go and die. And apparently, that's not actually the case. Uh, Val- Valve solution it, after fixing the technical problem that led to this is wait for it, wait for it, do nothing. Actually, that, that's not 100 percent true. Um, they, they've made it, they flagged it so you can trade the first item you got uh, using this exploit, but then all the other items will be trade locked. So there's going to be a lot of like fancy items floating around, but you can't trade them; they're just locked to your account, which I think is an okay way of going about it. I guess I don't I don't know. I'm I'm sure the people who engage in like high frequency hat trading have some real feels about this that I don't care about. Part of me laughs when you say that. Part of me cries when you say that because I. It's know, true. Yeah, it's true. Right. There's bots tuned to do exactly that. One hundred percent. Looking at that, man, I still feel like. What, what do you think, Pedro? It kind of like, kind of jacks up the economy in the sense that you get to keep it, and therefore it devalues. Yep. Like ultra rare and hats, even if you can't trade inevitable. it. Because <laughs> if you're thinking about buying something that's ultra rare, you're like, but that other guy has it. I, now it's not but, as valuable. You know, Valve actually walked away from this one really graciously because not only are they letting you trade the first one you got, uh, the others, if you don't want them, you can just refund the crate you bought or the key you bought that got you that item and you get that money back. So it's like, oh, okay, that's unusual of you, Valve. They've even got uh, like... To the extreme. Which nobody where, in the history of ever is going to do, but go ahead. But there were people who, when they started getting, like, a lot of unusual hats uh, in the crates, they started deleting them because they thought, oh, crap. They, they might think I'm cheating and they'll, uh, you know, hit my account with a ban. I don't want that. So they started deleting the items. And Valve is going like, okay, we know that you did that with the best of intentions, so you're getting the items back. And you can refund them if you want. Mm. So, really good on you, Valve. For once in your life, you did good. Real good. <laughs> no, no, no. Re- re- regarding hats on their store that they still profit yes. off of. You gotta think about the it. The bit so, that I, makes you money. I wonder if it added any value just to the overall account when you sell it as... <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Re- re- remember the old hat crisis of old 2019? Yeah, well, I have one of those we hats. some of those. <laughs> All right. Um, Lux or Pita? Pedia? Pedia? There's no I in there, so it's Pita. Lux Torpeda. <laughs> Lux Torpeda. Yes. Tell me about it. So uh, this is a, a little project similar to the one we talked about a couple of weeks back that introduced native uh, DOSBox for games on Steam that use DOSBox. Instead of running the DOSBox version on Proton, you can just use the native version. And this one does something very similar, but in future... For everything else. Right now, they have a very sizable list. Uh, They already support uh, Arx Libertatis, IO Quake 3, OpenJK for the Jedi Knights, OpenXCOM for the uh, old XCOMs. 
uh iortcw for return to castle wolfenstein the, 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 the list the list is on the github page pedro they the, yes, i believe uh, the people the, can read if they follow the show notes it is a sizable are. list but uh, my question was uh, it's like yes we want uh, we want this we want this very very much but where is openmw to which jordan pointed out it's like yeah that's a thing that's on their like to-do list and looking through that to-do list i'm like ooh Open X Ray for Stalker and Open R W for GTA Three. I want me some of that. They, they don't. They don't have the Borealis support yet for um, Neverwinter Nights and The Witcher yeah. and stuff like that. But I'm sure that will be added too. Um, and if, you, if they actually have a process, if you want to submit a request to have a new engine supported, um, yeah, the Open MW one though. Apparently, they're having some issues with their CI system because they got to like pull all the source code and build it. They're essentially they're they're doing something similar to Lutris. So here's the obligatory rip Lutris. Sorry, Strider, <laughs> it's dead. Good, you, 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 had a, you had a good run. Uh, but one 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 thing I did notice is that there's no Vulcan love on any of the GZ Doom implementations, which is a little sad. A little. Mm, well, baby steps, man, right? Yeah, yeah ba- baby steps. Don't I, I, can see that. You, 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 I guess it would require extra libs. <laughs> what you don't want to do is promise something you can't deliver, right, Vov? Um, <laughs> or you know, sell them on pre-order. Um, <laughs> known about this, Valve cancels Virtual Link Adapter accessory for the Index. It was the one cable to rule them all, citing technical issues and laptop ado- adoption. And Jordan, you're like, hey man, laptop vendors were couldn't even be fucked with in the first place, right? That well, that that's the that's the reason that Valve was citing. Uh, because the the main thing was if you have a desktop PC, you have a plethora of ports, a port plethora, as it were. So you can you can connect things. But for laptops that have a limited I/O, something like the Display Link adapt, um or Virtual Link Adapter, which uh, do, which uh, combines all the display stuff and the control stuff into like a single USB C interface, is actually kind of valuable. The problem is you actually have to pipe um, you actually have to pipe the GPU into the uh, into the USB C header, which is something that a lot of nat- laptop manufacturers were not doing, and effectively it that's what the that's what the solution requires. But uh, go on. I'm just thinking. I'm looking at it like this because you know I bought the 2060 because it had the display. Link. Yeah. What it had was a free USB C port on it for me, and it works fantastically. Thanks, Nvidia. But I would one one has to believe that Nvidia wouldn't randomly throw that shit on their card if it wasn't for because mm-hmm. uh, if you were going to do some okay, you 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 be Nvidia, Jordan. I'm going to be Valve. Oh, oh, okay, hold. On. Let, 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 let me let me let me Go get, get a leather jacket. <laughs> I I I, I don't jackets. have one, but I'm okay. gonna, I'm going to charge jackets. you five hundred dollars for the Pro Vision Talk hey. to me. So. Hey, NVIDIA, what's up, baby? How you doing, sweetheart? I'm sorry. My leather jacket means that I can't talk to you directly. That's great. All right, man. I, uh, I'll see if I can operate off the vibrations from your awesome jacket. Uh, we made a gang of this first generation headset, and we apparently sold a lot of them. So we're going to make some more. But we got this idea. Check this out. One cable to rule them all. And, you know, maybe on your reference cards for that next generation... You, you could throw in like a USB Type-C uh, Gen 2.1. Could you do that for us? Would that be kind of sweet, right? In, NVIDIA deems this so. Yeah, get fucked. We're dropping it. Uh-huh. <laughs> We're Steam. Didn't you learn anything about Steam boxes? <laughs> Yeah, well, and and I, I mean, I mean, hard, hardware support was one thing. The other, the other thing too is if you're going to be moving around a lot, that USB C connector is not the most rugged thing in the world either. Oh I'm hell expect- no. I would expect like a couple of cables to just snap, and I'm I wouldn't be surprised if people if during like the actual testing of it, they're like, yeah, we can't do this because it's we're ruining people's video cards by like snapping off USB C headers and the leaving them in the f- one on in Jackbox that Tomahawk B three fifty board just from because I have a USB C hub that just turns it into a gang of uh, USB threes. Maybe five times I've plugged that in, and it's wobbly, man. It's got to be snug just from that so fu- yeah those are not designed for any and type this of- is indicative of a bigger problem especially when it comes to usb type c is that if there is a specification no one's really following the damn thing <laughs> because <laughs> yeah laptops the way that they're implementing usb type c they couldn't do the video link uh the like the standard uh type c connector heavy air quotes around standard there um 
They are... which, which, which ones? No, Standards they're... one, two, three, or five. I, I've seen the yes. type, I've seen type <laughs> C to USB two. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're we're, we're, we're type like, C to Firewire. Okay, so it doesn't even work with all the motherboards. It certainly it doesn't work with all the laptops. The only ones that it would actually work were with the uh, NVIDIA uh, NVIDIA video cards. So it's like, okay. But NVIDIA really marketed it. It's like, no, this is the display link thing. Because I remember it's mm-hmm. like uh, USB-C. All right, I'm just going to plug an encoder in there. And Scott was like, wait, that's just a USB. And I was like, yeah, this is USB-C. They just, you plug yep. it in. It works. That's all <laughs> it is. It's just a bridge right to the PCI because it's on the by 16 lane. Well, it should be. And mm-hmm. uh, you got the bandwidth for it. Anyway. That that happened, but a uh, bit of good news, everyone, I think, maybe, if you like to check the Steam store and check for new releases, you know, I, we I got to do it every day to see if there's anything we need to take a look at on the show. And one thing you normally run into uh, if you pay that type of attention is the same handful of just Linux games. I can't imagine what it's like on Windows showing up in the new releases week after week after week with a to-be-determined release date or a Mm -hmm. coming soon. Valve has uh, decided to actually do something about it. So if you're going to be changing your release date now, you got to contact Valve because when you go to do that, I love, um, this is um, our Steam on the Reddit's uh, Headless Ivan. It's like, finally, there's a, you get change your intended release date. Your intended release date is currently set. What do you need to contact Valve here with a reason for the new release date? You know, the earliest possible release. And it gives you that. Valve time, but fucking thank you. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I took the sweet time with that one. <laughs> in, now, uh, hard, hard, hard mode. Do, well, you, do you think there's a machine learning algorithm on the other side of that email address that will uh, try to automate and process these things? It, okay, if it doesn't work and it fucks up horribly, yes, because Valve sucks at yep. that. Um, <laughs> good news, though. I mean, the perma coming soon hopefully is going to go away. But I will say, because I, I know somebody's listening right now is like, listen, man, I'm just trying to get my game discovered. And it's Steam. It's a shit show. I got to compete with Meagermon. <laughs> you know, which is a meme version of Mega Man 2. Go take a look. That's a real thing. Uh, but this is getting out of hand and people were abusing it. So there's other ways. There's other ways. I'm, I'm just glad it's fixed. Yeah. And uh, some developers were saying, yeah. So people started doing that because wish listing a game increases its trust score. And the trust score is basically the thing that keeps most game developers from being able to add the trading cards to their game, which is an extra source of revenue. So they really want random people to see the game show up on the upcoming lists uh, so that they add it to the wish list. And if enough people add them, all of a sudden they can push out uh, the trading cards and I'm pretty sure there's several games out there already that are done and uh, all they want is they're dragging basically everyone by the genitals uh, and uh, they're just waiting to have enough of a trust score so that they can add the trading cards mm. and that's that's a big move <laughs> conspiracy theories Pedro that's you're just full of them but hey, maybe they're sitting back wondering, should I make a Linux port now that this Proton keeps getting updated every week? Well, yeah, Ma- Proton does keep getting an update every week. And this one uh, is, well, it brings both a DXVK version bump and an F-Audio version bump. DXVK, uh, is that like also- Dixvix? Yes, that's Dixvix. <laughs> Uh, Dix, and Dix, they Vaporub. also uh, upgraded uh, or updated Wine Mono to 492, which uh, apparently fixes uh, the game Dark and DLC Quest, which is also a game, believe it or not. Uh, so it, it's a couple of .NET games that actually make use of certain uh, .NET libraries, which Wine Mono 492 implements properly. And as a bonus duck soda, uh, Ethan Lee, you may know him as a flippity jib dib dib dab dab by bo and uh, he was saying on Twitter, with the new version of Proton, you can run Duck Game directly from Proton. You do, you do, you no longer need to actually go into the prefix and hack some stuff to get it to run with the built-in FNA functionality on Proton. You just need a launcher line to set the D input to native, and boom, there it is. <laughs> 
Yeah, on, on, on that same thread, he was also saying, yeah, there's still a couple problems with the <laughs> with the new DuckTales. So, you know, maybe, maybe get a real Linux port. Nah, <laughs> just, you just got to run it through like two protons. They'll fix it. Pro- <laughs> Yo, dog, I heard you like protons, so I ran Proton and Lutris and Code Weavers. It, it works great with Kali Linux. <laughs> Haven't you heard? That's my desktop because yeah. I'm a hacker. Um, Listen, it, it doesn't run on uh, Illumos, so mm. it's, it's crap. Good news, everyone. Um, Rocket League is going to get rid of your gambling addiction overnight, instantaneously, because this is this is how it's that'll fix it, right? That's problematic wording right there, but this one uh, is uh, certainly getting rid of the crates, or at least phasing them out, uh, and uh, eventually actually getting rid of them and uh, just letting people get the stuff that the crates would usually get. It's basically like, okay, you can just pay us the money and get the thing. Cool. Uh, it would be very nice, you know, to see this if it weren't for the impending death of Rocket Cars on Linux that is the Epic Game Store exclusivity. L- listen, Pedro, you don't need to prey on the vulnerable anymore because Epic will just give you the money that you mm-hmm. could have farmed off of addicts. Yep. It's 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 solving the problem. <laughs> Epic is saving the world. One exclusive deal at a time. Science, baby. Um, <laughs> they... <sighs> They, they got to do something. I mean, this is effectively going, hey, we're just going to make it a store, man. You just buy what you want now. There's price tags on it. Could have been like that from the start. We're still <laughs> going to get that. They're not going to get as much because, yes, I mean, listen, I, I don't get unhinged about that. I mean, like, people got problems. They're going to find a way to gamble. I mean, anywhere you go, go look up an arcade in your town or your village. <laughs> it doesn't have uh, Pac-Man in it. Um, but with... This being able to buy it directly because they have to find or maintain, I guess I should say, a monetization system for when Rocket League is free to play. Mark mocking words. It's going free to play when Epic rolls in with it. Guaranteed. Well, a- yeah, after it gets fully integrated into now. Fortnite. Mm-hmm. Because that, 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 that's, that's what's really happening is that um, that Rocket League is just going to become a, an alternate mode for Fortnite. Right. And that's it. If you want to play Rocket League, you got to play Fortnite. And this is going to be the brilliant thing. This is going to happen. Um, I, I, I'd love to eat poo on that saying, but I'm saying it. I'm saying, I've said it before, and I'm like, no, you're just everyone. No one's saying that, man. Everyone's hoping against it because we're going to end up with this bifurcated version of the Steam version and the Epic version, and mm-hmm. not looking to see how Epic cocks it up. And they'll also do that. So stay tuned. <laughs> um, bye, b- bye, bye, crossplay. Womp womp. Linux plans. Um, this is about Rust. Uh, explaining our decisions regarding the few after like six months of silence. But hey, why not? Mm. Better late than never. Um, so yeah, this is like Rust effectively reaching into life. And well, you know what? I, I kind of thought I just spoke for everyone here, but I don't clearly. Uh, Gary. No one cares anymore, man. I mean. It's like next. It's a game that never really worked right under Linux. Uh, we've grown not to expect Linux support from Face Punch, and I, I don't think anyone really has the time or energy to keep investing in the trollish bullshit. So, hey man, at least you put a bow on it, right? Good on that. Hmm? <laughs> Well, we 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 gotta we gotta mind this for comedy's sake. I mean, mm-hmm. Gary, 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 God bless you. You've you've missed the forest for the trees here. They're going over, <laughs> going over this uh, going over this little article, this little manifesto of his. Um, he 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 addresses a couple of points. He's like, yes, we admit that we did not support Linux. We did we ignored bugs. We try. We thought, oh well, there's no no one's playing the game on Linux, so we can we'll feel free to break stuff on the Linux build if it fixes stuff on the Windows build. And we're gonna treat you like a second class citizen. Um, and uh, he goes on to say that oh, because of all these unpatched issues that exist in the Linux version, the cheaters are using it. But uh, Gary, I believe the last Linux-related update we saw from you was we've updated to a new version of Unity. This should fix all Linux problems. That I think that was verbatim the quote there. Um, Almost, yeah. <laughs> But it's, uh, you know, I've seen Gary uh, say a lot of dumb shit about Linux, but I think this is the first time in this whole time uh, that uh, I've actually seen him be honest 
Uh, he's still desperately trying to skew the facts to make him and Face Punch uh, look. There, 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 there's a lot of there's a lot of back padding on. Uh, yeah, there, there's a lot of patting themselves on the back. We did we did more than was expected. We did more than other companies who have the yeah, Linux version. Yeah, no, 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 Linux support was One great. Thing I do kind of want to bring up when you what? bring up both of you are taking these topics, and <laughs> maybe we should also say it. It's coming up on 2020. We we have. A very substantial, a sizable uh, group of very competent developers who have released mm -hmm. games on Linux using Vulkan, using Unreal, uh, using Unity, homebrewed engines, and managed to support multiple distributions. And yeah, they figured it yeah. out because they're, this is what you've, I mean, I understand if, if this was three or four years ago. You could come out and it's like, man, you should be very grateful that we tried. Well, hey, man, you tried, but you fucked up the entire time doing you it. You didn't do a good job. And I think as a community, we're out of fucks to give, so peace yeah, out. Yeah, uh, I, for one, look forward to never having to cover Rust on or any future Face Punch games. We, in, we, in, we never did it because it was never this entire time in a playable state. Next week, Gary's Mod 2, Linux exclusive. Let's get onto something that does run on Linux properly. <laughs> uh, pro properties, properly is yet to be determined. Uh, Space Mercs. It is a um, six degree of freedom shoot 'em up um, that you can play. It's available under Linux right now. You can pick it up for $11. And. It does not feature mouse support. Oh my god, that is it, it, it is very important. It's at the top of the the about this game section. Yep. You cannot use your mouse with this game at Did all. I use Don't my even Nintendo try. Power pad? Is it a mouse? Not really. No. Then, <laughs> then you, you should, should be, be fine. fine. All right, neat. <laughs> uh, the, the 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 other thing is, I, I was scrolling through the system requirements. It lists an Iris Pro GPU as the recommended one, which may indicate to me that this was exclusively developed on a laptop not that there's anything wrong with that it's just an interesting little bit of trivia here um the one interesting thing is that the missions are supposed to be about five to ten minutes long so you can get you can get through this in a copy break which is a nice design feature i like games that allow you to sort of segment things so that yep. you can play a little bit here play a little bit there and not have to commit tons of time because there are games that will require that and they're kind of difficult to play when you're in your thirties and have other responsibilities. Um, <laughs> no, no, no multiplayer though. And I, th I think this could have benefited from like a little bit of deathmatch. Mm -hmm. um, but I mean, it, it, it's, it's available. If uh, descent isn't doing it for you, you don't have any friends to play it with. Check this out. If you're looking for something kind of like this, uh, that is Linux native and has multiplayer, uh, look up all space. Hmm. That's definitely a thing to go pew pew in, which not many people do, but it's there for the pew pewing. Mm. And if you are looking for something like this, but that's more of a roguelike and has really pretty graphics, Everspace. <laughs> how, ma how yeah. many space games are there, guys? I think all, all space, a Everspace, lot. Space Marks. <laughs> Gentlemen, we need to go deeper. Yes. Uh, what 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 happens if Don't Starve and Subnautica conceived a baby in a hotel room above a steampunk convention? You might get. We need to go deeper. It's a game where you're playing in a Jules Verne esque twenty thousand leagues under the sea submarine, and you got to explore. Um, the big thing here, aside that, from apparently Heisenberg. Walter White, yeah, yeah, okay. apparently Walter White being trapped in a submarine, is that it has online multiplayer. Oh my god, this is. This this is such a rare feature these days that I feel it's noteworthy just to spend a minute or two <laughs> thanking the developer Delhi Interactive for actually actually including this because you'd think hey it's it's a goofy looking game maybe you want to play it with some friends um, it kind of reminds me there was that uh, there was that one game it was it was it wasn't on Steam we talked about it in the news segment but it, it was you you were trapped in a submarine and it kind of reminded me like this or kind of reminded mm, me of this it, it kind of looks like multiplayer. Wop with that going on, but I'm just like, all right, what if, what if you have to get some cat ears so we can take a picture of it and so they'll send us copies? Because apparently, according to this video, that's one of the requirements. I mean, <laughs> <for a few laughs> copy. that well, dude clearly let's, let's, didn't have cat ears. I think, I think let's, it, let's, they were squinting. They were pretending he did. Let, let's talk. <laughs> let's talk to Mister Alert or Jill. They can. They have. They have cat ears. This is we, true. We pro yeah. We've proven this with science. <laughs> 
But um, yeah, it's a, another water game that isn't Lovecraft inspired. No, no, no. It's Jules Verne. Nice. No, <laughs> that's no, no. Uh, that's oh, kind of rare nowadays. <laughs> hold, hold, hold on to your shirt, Pedro. We're, we're getting to the Lovecraft later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we are. <laughs> it requires 3M cash. I didn't know 3M made cash, but all right. Fair enough. Weird flex. I think that I think that's actually the the i five that uh, Pennywise sent you, so it might work on those <laughs> systems. I didn't see a three M logo anywhere on it, but cool. Yeah, you get the th- no no. You just get the three M tape like and you tape off? some extra. Yeah yeah yeah. To okay. the, <laughs> yeah. So yeah, yeah. It, it, it's it's not LGA or BGA. It's just you you peel just it off and then you stick it. It's like stick it's like it sticker. There. Yeah. All right. Sticker. Neat. All right. Uh, M O N. That spells Lovecraft. Uh, give us a Cthulhu adventure is available for your perusal. It's a bit expensive uh, at twenty bucks, a little but, bit, uh, <laughs> a little bit. But it's a it's a it's a point and click adventure game. It's apparently fully voice acted, and the animation it looks like at least like late Newgrounds quality, which is pretty decent. I um, think this can trade blows toe to toes with anything can, that came out of Double Fine in the past five years. Yeah. Yeah, um, I mean, most my, of those were remasters. So, <laughs> uh, but it it it, def- it definitely looks He's like got it. Cat de- ears. Yeah, yep, or 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 cyclopean horns. I, I don't know, but it it definitely seems like it's taking a lot of inspiration from stuff like Monkey Island and a lot of the LucasArts point and click adventure games. Uh, so it could be it could be pretty neat. It has some fairly comprehensive system requirements. Uh, it requires the elusive Ubuntu eighteen plus. Mm. So none, if 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 that barely legal Ubuntu is not going to cut it here, uh, nope. But no. <laughs> Ubuntu jailbait edition—that's what we need. That's not going to be a show title. Don't waste your time. <laughs> oh, boo, boo. Uh, yeah, but uh, it's 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 available now. It it looks good. Like this this is some significant production quality. I'm I'm impressed. Yeah. It looks very good, and the also the system requirements is like you need twenty gigs for a point and click adventure game. Shut that's up. Pro- significant. There's probably actually a lot of cutscenes in here. That's probably what that actually is. <laughs> that's bad encoding, then. <laughs> no, that's good encoding. <laughs> yeah, it's really good encoding, but not properly looked for after <laughs> thirty eight forty. But that's better than the seven twenty like four eighty whatever most people do with <laughs> blink and just oh oh yeah that just looks like shit when you yeah. upscale it to UHD. Yep. Yeah, yeah. I, I can forgive that on old games, but we see that to this date. But that's okay. We love them anyway. Indeed. All right. Well. That does it for us. Coming up next. Oh my god, NVIDIA has totally embraced open source and has dumped all the drugs. I'm just I'm just fucking with you. They dumped some header files on GitHub. Your header file. I'll give you some header file. <laughs> And uh, there will definitely be some science thrown at you in the next few minutes. But uh, right now, we need to go into this teeny tiny segment that we like to call uh, what, it, what was it this week that caused Ven uh, some really, really bad physical pain or at least some existential Evan, dread? Well, uh, 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 thank you for taking a break of knocking shit off walls. Um, <laughs> right, because that was me. <laughs> I was. I saw it. <laughs> I picked it up well, off I, the I, ground. I, I, I mean, that? you you were you were the one holding the saw. Yes. Saw it. He's a funny man. Yeah, you 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 can you can support all this this <laughs> gut splitting side hammering comedy by heading out over to LinuxGameCast.com. <laughs> we got a menu up at the top that has a couple things like the support menu where you could support Does us on stuff qu- like Patreon. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> There Patreon, Libra Pay. We got, we got, we got a store. You can buy some clothes, PayPal, wish lists. Yeah, uh, we also got affiliate links uh, for the Amazons if you want to buy some stuff for yourself and support us. It's, it's great. Terrifying. It is. Um, but yeah, def- definitely head on over to patreoncom Linux Gamecast. Uh, you can get access to our Discord channel. You can get show note access. Join us for some of the game streams. Uh, we did some Jackbox on. Uh, on Friday, that, <laughs> on that, yesterday, yes, uh, that, that that day, that day that was yesterday, <laughs> whose name I can't remember. We're doing some uh, Charlie we're Murder. Give special uh, thanks to uh, Jordan. He he finished his weightlifting class. He was he was like, uh, what was it, a uh, bench spinning or whatever? Then like you joined us last night, man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it, it, it's it's when you lie on the bench press and then you just kick your legs a bunch. It's it's really exhausting <laughs> <laughs> to, to to the people watching it. Anyways, is it, is to, it to, trying to get the bar off your chest. Or? 
No, you, you don't even unrack the bar, man. You just, you just hold it up oh, there. Oh, you just hold it. It's like riding a bike, man. Yeah. 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 Like no, it's, 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 all, it's all in the leg kicking, man. Oh, uh, yeah. But uh, being a Patreon gets you some awesome stuff. You know, I'm um, kind of scared, man. I, you, no one's figured it out yet. That when we do the pre-pre super shows, and if you're an executive producer, you can participate. No one's got their mic on yet. That that's been there. <laughs> I've I've had it listed like that. We're fucked. By the way, next week, tune in. Um, <laughs> yep, yep. Everyone's going to be doing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we got we got, we got, we got some we got some people we got to thank though. Yeah, uh, Pennywise do. sent oh. Ben a bundle of drugs and also some CPUs. <laughs> All right. For audio <laughs> listeners, imagine what a like three three and a half kilos of coke looks like. That's what we're seeing. It it just has <laughs> mail wrapping around it, like tied up. This gets entertaining in the fact that I had to walk across a pretty decent sized parking lot in a shopping center carrying that, and I'm like, fuck it. I I didn't know whether or not. It, didn't have <laughs> this was kind of a yolo thing it's like i assume there's nothing illegal in there so i it's like but i wasn't trying to be suspicious with it and uh, so you just you just, you just carry it above your head like <laughs> fuck yeah i did um like like, no, like go Statue of liberty <sighs> um, <yeah. laughs> Drop inside of that uh two new to me uh cpus quad cores for the optiplexes and some memory ram so now they got eight gigajoules they are butter robots. They seem to be working fine. They have not exploded, so we want to thank Pennywise very much for helping me maintain my track record of never buying an Intel desktop processor because I was getting close. <laughs> uh, uh, we also got to thank Linux to Nuru. He sent you a case. We finally did it. Uh, Jackbox is literally in a box. A, a, cu- a cube. A cube. It, it's the Corsair 540 Thick Edition. Now... What you're looking at, that's our audio rack. That audio rack is 19 freedom inches wide. So you you can math that out to <laughs> which I'll say to everyone. For a very particular use case, that's an awesome case. Uh, for anything outside of this particular use case, don't buy this case. It makes no practical sense, whatever. It's effectively an open air test bench with a side panel on it. I mean, it's would be just dust city what we needed it for is because things have to be quiet in here for obvious reasons and it's got the 140s on it i got the hyper 212 that also blows straight up like pedro knows this yep. knows those feels <laughs> and it has the psu and everything on the back side of the case on a separate compartment so yeah that's the thing it's awesome uh everything went well i only fucked up like plugging in the fans so you do get that satisfaction, John. You get that. Because I plugged one in. <laughs> the B350 from that Tomahawk, dude. Do you ever run into that? Where, like, logically, you look, you're looking at a motherboard, right? And you're thinking everything on the top right-hand corner. That's fan, right? F- yeah. Sometimes fan, fan or a PSU connector. Or... <laughs> you, you expect CPU fan inside the board. Hmm? Yes. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I've I've seen a couple that are right like next on the, to on, the, on the CPU the socket or, in between the CPU yeah, socket somewhere in the, the RAM. general area, yeah. right? Yeah. You look for it, you're like, all right, that's just going to be there. Then here, I'm thinking, you know, two fan, two fan. <laughs> Fuck me, no, it's not. Um, fan, <laughs> two, two. Oh, go ahead. Let's get your prediction. Uh, two, two, two fan or fan power switch reset button fan. No, no, these are all four pin headers. Okay. Um, um, this is fan. Pump, fan, fan. Wait, no, no. It's two, then one, and the other one. I mean, think I fan, fan pump, pump, fan pump. The other fan pump is directly behind one of the by sixteen PCI slots that the card covers. <laughs> and the last one is the bottom left hand side of the board, to which I had to put like an extension cable, run it behind <laughs> in the separate compartment, and come up its ass on the other side just to get that last fan in. That seems like a so very well constructed John. Forward. Sleep well. I mean, you, right. you get a little. <laughs> eh, in. Yeah, but thanks, uh, we, we, yeah, uh, we got we got a store as well. Uh, buy some t-shirts. We're, we're we have some Jack games where maybe we're designing some new t-shirts. Stay tuned. <laughs> we got a couple of good ones last <laughs> night, man. We 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 did. There there there's. Let's let's just say let's just say kiss my ass and leave it at that. Mm. Speaking of ass kissing, Nvidia is trying to do some of that, isn't? Aren't they, Pedro? 
Well, sort of. Uh, there's that uh, saying that NVIDIA never releases a damn thing as open source, but that's not entirely true. They have, uh, in the past, actually released several header files and some documentation about how their cards work. And, 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 and well, their deprecated physics implementation. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and, uh, well, now uh, what used to be uh, at... They have the URL here. Um, download.nvidia.com forward slash open dash GPU dash doc uh, is now also available on their um, GitHub. So you can just wait, wait, literally... Wait, wait, wait. It, it sounds like you're saying they took the essentially useless shit off their web zone and just cloned it over to GitHub. Pretty much, yeah. Oh. <laughs> uh, and if you want to, you can uh, create a local uh, Git clone of um, those header files in that documentation for some reason, but you can. Yeah, I, I mean, you, <laughs> if you crawl through the source tree, you will have the same reaction as me, which will be, yep, that's certainly a collection of header files. Good, good job. Yep. <laughs> are you, are you, are you going to give us the libraries behind those? Fuck no. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, and, and, and actually, actually empty, empty brought up a really good point. This was a sec essentially NVIDIA going, okay, let's identify all the stuff that Nouveau has figured out, and then we're going to put that on GitHub and be like, oh, we're helping. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, NVIDIA. I mean, to NVIDIA's credit, at least their drivers uh, for decade plus have worked on Linux and... <laughs> Thing I got, it's hard to stick up for NVIDIA, man. Um, you make good video encoders. I'll give you that. But one thing I will say about it is I want like open source Nuvo drivers for the 980 that work because I have to install a binary blob in Jackbox, what we were just talking about, which has the old 980 in it, just so that thing doesn't run full tilt 24-7. Yeah, Maxwell support is basically you get a picture on screen. <laughs> a nine series, hey, hey man, man, we, we, we released the sign out. firmware. <laughs> yeah, the last headers that they released were for um Kepler. Hey, Jordan, Jordan, so that's the seven hundred series. Jordan, pretend to be NVIDIA again. <laughs> hey NVIDIA. Go fuck yourself. I, All right. I, I, I did speak with you. <laughs> now suck my L G C cares. Hashtag. <laughs> All right. Okay. So going from closed source to very much uh, open source, Vulcan Progress Report 2 from uh, the Godot engine. And yep, they have uh, made quite some progress with uh, Vulcan. Now you have like proper 2D lighting uh, using Vulcan and you have um, some really fancy effects going on. Uh, but the big Ooh. one for me, at least, was the multi-threading bit, which is, uh, they say, thanks to the fact that uh, the new work on Godot 4.0 is done in C++11, many interesting advances were done with regards to multi-threading. And yeah, uh, you get multi-threaded shader compilations, you get multi-threaded a bunch of other stuff, which is really awesome to see, especially for 3D rendering, which is something that we kind of still have to uh, we have yet to see which is like full on 3D game using Godot and I mean actual game not you know tech demo yeah <laughs> I I mean it, it's it's very interesting to see like what they can actually accomplish because we associate a lot of what Vulkan is doing with the 3D space but it actually has a lot of neat 2D features as well yep. that uh, Godot is going to be taking advantage of speaking of 3D though they're also trying to make their engine a little bit more intelligent uh, in terms of memory allocation, previously it would allocate memory for 3D objects and it would allocate memory for 2D objects. But now the game will the game engine will detect, hey, you're not using any 3D stuff? Yeah, just free up that RAM because it's not doing anything, which is great if you're on an NVIDIA card. Like smart 3D is smart, baby. That, yep. That, that's good, man. I mean, if you're going to be doing 2D, you know, it's like, why block that off? Exactly. Or if, if you're not if you're not doing any 2D stuff, why why bother, right? Yeah. Vulcan for 2D. I love this future. All right. <laughs> Dicks Vix, get a little bump, man. That's not a yep. lot, but, you know, it's a thought that counts. Ocean in the motion and all that. A couple of regressions have been fixed. Uh, slightly reduced CPU overhead uh, with the DX11.1 games. Like, wow, all that fun stuff. Wow. And um, feature request out of the uh, HUD thing. This is what I'm curious about. Mainly because I thought it was already kind of there. I knew in Proton with they have the dxvk underscore hud where you can add the dev info uh the FERPs, frame times and memory that's when i play 
I like to keep all that information displayed so I know things when the fuckery begins where it's at. Yeah, but that's yeah, the- a, an environment variable that you can set on your profile uh, from the Steam Proton configuration thing. This is basically built into DXVK now, and it will, uh, if there is no uh, DXVK HUD environment variable set, it can uh, now show that regardless, which is nice. Yeah, because they have the per application config files that you can do. This is just a thing that you can enable if you want to not have to mess with environment variables. Uh, Yeah, but um, there's going to be some fewer crashes in The Division and Dishonored 2. Dishonored 2 is one of those ones that I really wanted to check out. I'm not a big Anno fan, but if you're into city building, Anno has kind of been the big granddaddy of crazy city stuff. Yeah, that's also kind of turned into like the benchmarking game for CPUs. True. Yeah. Um, the yeah. Uh, the other thing too is apparently asynchronous uh, display on NVIDIA is a little borked, not so much on Intel or AMD. So uh, you get the synchronous display if you are on NVIDIA, and that should help. Per- that should help with a bit of stability in some games. Hmm. You yeah. not work. I mean, that's yeah. the thing. Um, yeah, if you're if you're if you're using Steam, you've already ingested all these changes, so don't yeah, do it. The, that's the version that's currently the new Proton. So yeah, <laughs> you, you you may need to go into your per game settings and update the individual games to use the new uh, Proton, but that that's about it. All right. Oh my God, so much emulation. Let's let's <laughs> let's get into this. First off, number one, the idiots. They're not. Oh, they're not idiots. They're actually really really smart people. They're idiots for taking on this Herculean task, but I thank them for it anyways. Um, they got they got a progress report from June 2019. Uh, they they're on time this time, I guess. Sort of, kind of, not really. Um, but the big update here is they've added MSA support. Um, and they've been on a bit of a code quality tear as well. They've enabled uh. Uh, w all and W pedantic on Clang and fixed a bunch of warnings, uh, and that should help with just Im- just improving RPCs three as um, in terms of maintainability, in terms of stability because you're not doing anything weird that the compiler is saying ah you really shouldn't load memory like that. Um, but hey, you can finally play Haze now. Jonathan Davis of Corn would be proud. He worked very, very hard on that soundtrack, and now you can play it without <laughs> the original hardware. Um, they also have on the roadmap, they're saying they want to enable a generic way to bypass FPS caps that won't require a lot of per-game customization, because now a lot of games, with, with the hardware that we have available, we can run PlayStation 3 games at UHD. That's not something that the PlayStation 3 could you know really do, but we don't have to worry about those um, limits. However, the games themselves are written in a way that they're like, oh yeah, we're going we're gonna to cap ourselves at 30 FPS, we're going to cap ourselves at 60 FPS. Um, and for, for performance reasons that aren't really necessarily necessary on an emulator. So um, work continues on that. If you want to support them, they have a Patreon. You should give them money because they're doing fantastic work with Vulcan. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Vulcan is the big one. And chances are, if you have a good enough PC, you've probably seen that it's like, oh, it's barely hitting 20% on the processor and it's only using like 40% of the GPU. How about, you know, giving us... Some AA, some really nice AA, like multi-sampling. And multi-sampling means better looking games. Uh, if you're playing like Demon Souls uh, at 3840 by 2160 and you still see some of the jaggies going on, now you can throw some multi-sampling on it. Good luck. That that's I, I, going to be the real performance hit right there. <laughs> well, because because that was the thing too is that they had uh, for the longest time supported downsampling as well, so you could you could render mm-hmm. the game at UHD and play it in 1080p. Um, but yeah, the, that's still not perfect, and some games actually do require MSA because that was implemented in hardware on the PlayStation yeah. 3. <laughs> now now that support is there, so those games should work a little better. All right, well that's enough emulation talk. <laughs> yeah, about two the, more emulation two stories. More. Damn it. All right. <laughs> Son, fetch me a Switch. Uh, this is uh, Ryujinx, the Nintendo Switch emulator, which, unlike Yuzu, is not meant for homebrew. So you filthy pirates can, I don't know, play <laughs> Mario Rabbids on your computer. Mario Rabbids, you- I want this. It, it, it's it's a, it's a thing you get to it's like you, actually you'd hate it it's it's basically XCOM with Mario characters yeah it's basically um, XCOM with Mario and Rabbids <laughs> uh, but uh, it's okay uh, they, this, they, this one is, they have the team let's see we got to count um, anime character anime. one two three four five not bad not yep bad. Uh, no, <laughs> apparently the MS DOS release from 1999 is well also, I say yeah. that as a litmus as you know it's a pretty legit project when you got like five out of yeah. I mean, when yeah. Dix no, it, Vix it, it, has it, it, a anime protagonist person <laughs> yeah it's a listen, listen we <laughs> get shit done 
We hate on them quite a bit, <laughs> but they're they're productive little buggers. Um, yeah, um, their games compatibility page is a little out of date, though. The last time it was updated was like a year ago. And yeah, apparently doing it in C Sharp may not be the best thing for Linux, Ben? Question mark? Well, yeah, just like going by the little readme, there's like uh, support for OS X and Linux limited and not really recommended for use as a late. So... That's like saying, hey, man, we're working on some features that just don't work on Linux right now. Goodbye, .NET Switch. Core is open source, though. The yeah. 200 bucks. Come on. What are you? Yeah, that's the thing. .NET Core is uh, open source and it's available on Linux. They do. Why well, not use but, that? Because it doesn't have any of the features required because they want you to actually <laughs> develop this on Windows. Mm -hmm. is, is why. I mean, outside of that little thing, man. Come on. Yeah. I mean, you do need to use .NET Core 2.1 if you want to build it, at least. So, that, Well, I mean, I was on the GitHub, and I was like, all right, what's the build? Was like, it, they were kind enough to be like, hey, don't, don't bother with it right now. <laughs> <laughs> to their credit. Uh, right. uh, something, that, something that's not written in C Sharp and actually written in C++ is decaf, which is for the Wii U, Wii U, Wii U. For those of you who really like Kung Pao, Enter the Fist. That's what it's um, from, all right. <laughs> yeah. Um... <laughs> Yeah, uh, so right now it's just a research project. Uh, the guy's trying to figure out how to actually emulate um, the Wii U. Um, you might think, well, Jordan, why would that this guy do it? Because, you know, Dolphin exists. Well, here's the thing. is The GameCube and the Wii were actually close enough hardware-wise. Uh, they were actually using the same generation of chips. So um, Dolphin can actually handle emulation for both systems. The Wii U was a little bit of a different beast, especially with that extra display, mm -hmm. um, yep. which actually had some cool stuff in it. Um but uh, it's 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 available if you want to contribute to this. If you want to get your toes wet uh, developing emulators, you should maybe send this guy a pull request. It's kind of uh, reasonable, man. I mean, <laughs> CMake Curl, I was just looking at SDL2, Zlib, Vulcanist, basically what you would already have in there. Yeah. And if you want to if, use, if, you know, Conan, you, you do like a pip install and just get it done. But I don't trust pip. I got I got pip issues. <laughs> Char Charles Dickens would be proud. <laughs> Show us on this doll exactly where uh, Pip touched you. If I wanted to use unmoderated repos, I'd install Arch. All right. <laughs> uh, I, I, I thought you said you start developing in Node.js. Womp womp. All right. Coming up next, uh, we review an early access game, which is a little weird for us, but they sent us some keys over Curator Connect and then demanded that we do so. And we do what people tell us to do, right? Do do. It's premature, just like our sense of humor. Welcome back to the Chairquisition Early Access Edition. It's where the accused must survive trial by Fedora, Solus, and Fedor. And then, can the question be asked, <laughs> is it fun? Uh, this week, we're taking a look at uh, Waves 2. Uh, they were sent to us by the developer uh, Squid in a Box uh, over a Curator Connect. It's done on Un Unreal Engine 4. Uh, you can pick it up normally for about 10 bucks. What is it? Log on to the GERD and engage in psychedelic virtual combat as you dive deep into corporate networks, steal their secrets, and crash their servers by running rm-rf-no-preserve-root <laughs> slash star or whatever. I'm, I'm not going to read out a find command because that's too... Ah, whatever. Anyways, how, how, how's it run on Fedorf then? I don't know. Maybe I do. Maybe, maybe it's a little ruse, man. I'm hacking. Hacking the system. Uh, a clever ruse. Well, let's see. Does it launch out of the box over here on Fedorf 30? Uh, we are running 1920X Threadripper, uh, 32 gigajoules of RAM with a 2060 displayed at UHD. I had one spite crash. Like the first time I launched it, ran through it, and I was like, boom, here's your desktop. I was like, I hope this isn't reoccurring. Turns out it wasn't good on you. Um, uh, However, one issue I do have, uh, it's still perfectly playable, uh, ish, is it only runs at the maximum resolution of your monitor at full screen, which can be an issue if that resolution is 3840 by 2160. A little chuggy. Uh, speaking of the performance, though, at that 2160p, I'm getting about 45 FERPs uh, with the tw 2060, and... It's swinging its dick all over the place at 1080p from 60 to 100, depending on where your balls are at. Um, if you want to play it in a fluid 60, got to be real with you. Playing in a 1080p, that's one fourth of my monitor um, to maintain that 60. That's a bit challenging. What was not a big fan about that. Same results on Proton 411, though. I was like, maybe I can hack this and play it. Nope. 
same deal. Graphics, no unintended glitches, but it is blinking and glitchy uh, in a good way, in an intentional way. Vulcan by default with Unreal Engine 4. Good on you, mate. And uh, not very well utilized with the Vulcan. I'm only seeing about 50 to 70% GPU utilization with uh, the 2060. So question mark on that. Controls, it's twin stick, man. It works on everything. Steamy controller, uh, which doesn't have a twin stick, so I didn't try it. Uh, PS4 and the x controller. No issues. Out of the box, 100%. I'll give it four cheers. Yeah, on uh, Fedora 3064 bit with the i7 6700K, mitigations on, GTX 1080 Ti, it does in fact launch. And apparently I paid good money for that Ti because it holds, for the most part, it holds about uh, 56 to 59 frames a second at UHD. There are a couple levels, though, where it just eats shit. Mm. Oh, my God. Uh, I don't I don't know why, because they're, they're, it's a little inconsistent because there are levels where like there's more stuff on the screen and the performance holds. So I have I have no idea. I think maybe they need to spend a little more time massaging their uh, Spock, as it were. Uh, graphics, yeah, they're 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 there. They're it's it's very Neon Tron inspired. But I gotta say, man, oh the character blindness and the bullet blindness and also the XP blindness, <laughs> the blindness, blindness. Yeah, because and and then like the saturation will increase periodically as you get closer to the corner, and then as as you're being swarmed with things. It gets a little screwy, um, but you can still kind of make things out. And control wise, just playing it with the the drool Spock, it, it works. I'll give I'll give it four cheers. Yeah, and uh, over here in Solus Land with the thirty seven hundred X and the GeForce uh, GTX ten eighty, it uh, yeah it launched just fine. No spike crashes that I noticed. Uh, there were the performance, the boss level. There were some significant. Uh, if the video makes it that far, um, you'll see that uh, it dipped well into the 20s. Uh, but yeah, at UHD, it holds around 50 on my end. And at uh, 1080p, it I don't think I ever noticed it dropping below 100. So yeah, uh, the graphics. Yeah, the teeny tiny little uh, flying clusters of enemies, they look a little too much like the XP orbs. So I kept getting nope without realizing why. But yeah, it, it, I, it is uh, what it is. It is very neon e looking, but hey, that's a matter of personal preference. The controls. So the first time I launched a game, the uh, Dual Shock, it didn't do anything. And this isn't the first time that I've had an issue on the first launch uh, of a game with the Dual Shock. Uh, the um, the game I think this we is threw a Solus problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I'm I'm thinking so as well. How dare but you? <laughs> uh yeah the game itself uh apparently works just fine with the controller is just on my end on that first run it decided you know what mm, no nah. so yeah i'll give it a clean bit of health uh bin of health no bill of health four chairs well, <laughs> listen it. we, we it's like cpus we gotta bin things for health <laughs> this is how you can always tell like one page is just getting to that point because he drops about six decibels in his loudness, then the then the random stutters come in. It's awesome. I love it. Stay tuned. That's going to be fun. Indeed. <laughs> um. Oh, giant flaming blob orb. That one's fun. Anyways, let's let's head on over to the fun segment. Ben, oh did you no! Who saw that coming? Let's talk about whether or not it was fun. Uh, I'm going to say the hardest part of this damn game is the fucking menu, man. Let's spend like five <laughs> minutes five minutes in that thing. Uh, after the tutorial, trying to figure out just what the hell to do to start a campaign. I finally um. You know, I didn't have that, oh, moment. You know, sometimes you have that. I had more like a really moment, and that happened. Uh, that campaign menu, I'm sorry. Hey, I'm not a clever man, but it doesn't make a damn bit of sense. Like, from your first introduction, um, I get that I'm kind of like hacking zones by entering new zones and all that, just like going through level progression. Uh, at first level, also, it just kind of drops you in. It's like, figured it out, fucko, which, you know, I did. After an hour, I guess an hour and some change into this, uh, Got the gameplay down, understand the mechanics, and, you know, like my slowdown ability along with my bomb, my red ring at death. Actually, game's kind of almost too easy at that point. Uh, when it comes to the upgrade menu, fuck all idea how to use that. I was just clicking on shit, moving it around. I mean, you got like downloaded files, then you have like program files, then you can put check marks next to them. <laughs> And just that upgrade system by itself is like some hex grid nightmare that just straight up defeated my foolish attempts at its comprehension. It just kind of comes across as like, this is like something that's been built up over time. 
tacked together and no one's gotten, keep in mind, it's early access, but no one's gotten around to writing the damn user's manual for it yet. Technically, well done piece of kit, very competent shoot 'em up and it's earlier stage. Uh, and it looks the business. It is pretty, even though it runs like pro. At nine ninety nine, I really think you got to consider this more of an um, investment because it needs some major work. And by that, I'm talking about the ability to full screen resolution, do it correctly. I mean, step one, I know it's possible to run Real Engine 4. The other game that featured a ball that rolled around was able to do it. Um, Steam World. Steam World. Uh, something like that. It's a solid Steam base. Ball. And kudos to the developer for bending Unreal Engine 4 and do something playable. Good start. So, yeah, absolutely 100, but one chair. Nope. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so here's the thing. I get the shtick. It's a cute visual metaphor. It's a cute gameplay metaphor. But please, please, when you present the level select screen, Fucking tell me what level it is and what button I need to press in order to get to said level. No. I should not have to run and map. No. I should not have to go through TCP dump output uh -uh. and look through my LSPCI. Just, all right. Maybe Any, it's going to come with like a sketchbook, like missed it so you can make No, notes. maybe maybe, maybe, it, maybe it'll come with like a Unix man page so you can do man waves too and it will tell Unix you how to play. Unix can't read, man. <laughs> that, that's racist. Uh, anyways, yeah, so I'm not really the best person you should be asking for shmup recommendations. I can tell you that like this one isn't bad, I guess. I pri primarily because I'm not complete dog shit at it. Uh, Pedro and I were playing some multiplayer earlier today, and I kicked his ass. So apparently, twice. Twice, <laughs> yeah. So apparently, apparently, I'm not the worst at it. Question mark. I don't know. Um, and really, when I say multiplayer, I mean private high score board because that's what it is. There's not even like any super puzzle fighter Tetris effect thing where you can it, by getting a higher score you screw over your opponent. No, it's just who can score outscore whom. And that's, I, I I feel they could do a little better with the multiplayer, but it is early access, so maybe they'll add some more modes. Uh, the game itself, uh, like like I said, I I let, I get the metaphor. It's cute. You you're 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 hacking systems. You're 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 compromising one thing and moving to another thing that's connected on the same network. I get it. It's like it's Babby's first representation of like how a network actually works. Although when you start talking about hubs. Yeah, maybe, maybe maybe your information is a wee out of date. I don't know. Um, there's also like random LSPCI output, and I'm like, dude, like you could you you could you can do better than that. You can actually run LSPCI and get the output, and then show that to me in the game. That would be kind of cute. Or like, it has a little thing at the bottom that says localhost. You can find out what my system's host name is and show me that. That I that would get a legit chuckle out of me. Um, other than that, it's just kind of a bog standard twin stick shooter. Uh, the enemies have a bit of a Pac-Man AI thing going on, uh, where if you tend to just stay in one place or adopt the same strategy. It'll periodically spawn. Well, sometimes it will try and spawn the various isosahedrons and dodecahedrons that will mess you up. But it's it's a little inconsistent as to when it will do that. Uh, sometimes you're like, I've stayed in one place for five minutes and nothing's happened. And then, oh my God, all of these D20s are trying to murder me. Please help. Gary Gygax, no. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, I also don't understand the upgrades system like i i get that you can like swap out your main components but how you actually access them i'm unclear i i hit that checkbox thing too and like then i was i i, I click i clicked on everything i could and nothing happened i ticked some checkboxes and nothing happened so i guess i don't know how to computer that's probably right it's it's okay i can't i can't give this thing a very like impartial score because i generally hate shoot 'em ups and this one if if i'm good at it then it's a little easy so two chairs yeah and well i can safely say i didn't hate all of the music uh, there was just one of the uh songs in my in defense there that... i let it play for almost eight seconds before i took off my headphones <laughs> there was one of those songs in there that i just could not it's no just no the rest of them they were all right um it took me almost 20 minutes to beat that boss uh which is like the os level uh once you unlock it uh because I had fuck all idea what I was doing and shooting like the uh, goopy center when the uh, little rotating sphere thing around it disappears didn't really seem to be doing anything. So I didn't fucking know. It takes you. Um, okay. I, I don't want uh, 
I had the same problem. I was almost getting ready to cut it off. And I'm like, if this last time doesn't kill it, I'm going mm-hmm. to quit. And it finally died. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and uh, to reinforce what you said earlier, Ven, yeah, it, it, if you start a level, you either, like, select it and then press start of the controller, which I guess it's fair enough, or you hold down the left mouse click. I'm sorry, but the mouse as uh, an input medium has been around long enough t- that people know that with it, you either click, uh, you either do one left click, or you do double click. That's usually how you get things to open or how you get into things. Holding it down is not a thing, so please change that. Uh, the the UI to actually figure out like how to get into a level, you know, game a game's UI is supposed to be out of your way. It's supposed to let people get into the game and enjoy it, not you know be a hindrance uh, to people. Uh, then you do get in game and you get to guess at what the actual fuck you need to be doing because ain't no tutorial outside of the actual one teeny tiny uh, tutorial level that doesn't really do a very good job of explaining. Uh, and while you are trying to figure it out, uh, you keep getting ganked by homing enemies that don't die because a couple of frames skipped and the engine didn't detect the collision between the enemy hitbox and your projectiles. I uh, saw, I mean, if you've been paying attention to the video, you probably saw that happen a couple of times already. Uh, it's even it's more you need, egregious. You need that TI. <laughs> Uh, yeah, it's even more egregious uh, when you're playing as the Omega Ball, like I am right there, that's supposed to have a continuous beam that should destroy stuff in mere moments. And then, even with the super beam, it's not doing it. Um, the video... Yeah, the video that is currently playing, if you're watching the video version, stands as evidence to that. However, given that the game is only six ninety nine over here and it is an early access... Those gripes that I've described could very well be hammered out by the uh, by the time that the release proper uh, comes out. So feel free to disregard everything I just said. Two chairs. Well, <laughs> will do, Pedro. Ignore everything he says. All right. So there, there you go. It's it's it. Show, it definitely shows some promise. Uh, definitely some warts. Definitely needs some more time in the oven. Uh, but for ten bucks, maybe, maybe if it goes on sale, it might be a nice. Think of it as an investment. This is something I like to do every now and then. Because how many times have we said, "Oh, well, if this game had been delivered to us as an early access game, I would have graded it completely different." So here's something that is an early access. This is a solid base. This is something to work from. As long as like next week, and it's like, no, it's out of early access. And I'm like, oh, you fucked up there, son. <laughs> it's an Epic Store exclusive. <laughs> so there you go. Womp womp. <laughs> I do have one last thing to add. If you need to have a help button to figure out your freaking UI, something's gone wrong at a fundamental level. The UI reeks program (laughs) art, I'm just saying. (laughs) I would genuinely prefer a CLI to what we were provided in terms of graphical Text adventure menus. Bring them back. Make it a thing. Sweet. Yeah, just select one to start the game. Mm -hmm. Pretty great. All right, coming up next... What would happen if Microsoft gave us millions of dollars? Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, if you stuck around with us for this long, kudos, seriously, major kudos, because... Penny hose. It, it it gets rough sometimes. Yeah, your penny hose are probably in the dump by now, because uh, no one wants to see that. But hey, if you'd like to let what us know... What do you uh, have against knickers made entirely out of copper? I mean, it's time we address this. <laughs> I, I took a, I took a dump in my penny hose. I mean, if they're made of copper, it's something something heavy metal poisoning. Um, copper yeah. heavy metal. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, if you'd like to let us know exactly what we got wrong, or maybe somehow we got right, feel free to go on over to LinuxGameCast.com. You can. Uh, pick uh, LGC Weekly to send us some hate mail, you can pick some relationship advice to ask Jordan why. Why, Jordan? Uh, and Why, uh, why Jordan, this is a thing. indeed? You can totally uh, leave us some voicemail, so you can literally shout at us exactly you what you're thinking. You can leave us a talkie. Uh, that's the thing. We've had a number for the show almost since, like, day one, which I've... <laughs> Now that we've got everything moved over to the wirings digital, I'm like, this is viable. 
Hopefully no one will ever u- use it. So prove me right by not dialing 706-389-9810, which probably spells nice. something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't know, man. It's, especially if you're in like a European country, you should call us. That way you can rack up some nasty long distance charges. Fuck yeah. Oh, yeah. Bring it. <laughs> yeah. All right. Dave. Dave is uh, talking about Dragon's Dogma Dark Arisen and is saying that that's another game that benefits immensely from Proton 411 and D9 VIX. Uh, It was playable before, but with major frame rate drops and minor uh, visual artifacts, though he has to say that the minor visual uh, issues lessened with each Proton release. He used to have some uh, Gallium 9 installed and uh, Dragon's Dogma would crash on startup when attempting to play the game using it. Gallium 9 worked well enough on some other games like Styx Master of Shadows, but even Styx runs much better uh, with Proton slash D9 Vix now that uh, it ever did with Gallium 9. Uh, he's also using Valve's patched 5.0 kernel uh, for Ubuntu and Mesa 19.1 with the ACO uh, bits enabled, which are both available via PPA. That's like the dream system right there. Uh you get to use all of the new stuff, like the new kernel that has the improved uh, discards. Uh, you get to use the improved Mesa drivers. That's the awesome. Tutex. Yeah. Uh, if uh, you want to see exactly just how well you could get Dragon's Dogma to run with Proton before 4.11, I did a stream on that. It was very much playable once you enable TSMT, but with 4.11, it runs better than with CSMT enabled. It's like, Really, really awesome it's, job there, Valve. It's kind of interesting, though, if you think about it, because the native DirectX 9 hardware is uh, is outperformed by just implementing it in Vulkan, yep. which is... Oh, yeah. <laughs> this, this is the future where quickly, I mean, even even if you're just like uh, Winbro or WinSys, and like, oh, it's, games, it's the preservation of shit that you play, because in 10 years, that's not going to run on fucking Windows. Oh yeah, not 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 on not on Trident OS. Or well, on Windows, you know, maybe if you get that tier of subscription ten years from now, that allows you to play, you know, to load the mm-hmm. older Windows VM over the internet, <laughs> like your current service that mm. you'll be using ten years. That's going to happen. Have fun with it. <laughs> Look Z underscore Z. I don't know. I don't want to miss her. Uh, writes about Mixer, to which I had to query Ninja. I know what a ninja is now, so deal with it. Get off my lawn. Just made bank holy shit if Microsoft offered you eight figures. One, two, three. Ten million at minimum. Okay. And a multi-year deal. Would Linux Gamecast, that's just one word, brah, move to mixers? So. Yes. Good night, everyone. (laughs) (laughs) You know, for an eight-figure check, I wouldn't be opposed to buying a dedicated Windows server that would, its sole purpose would be to eat an RTMP stream and then ingest that into Mixer. I'm pretty sure we could be bought for like six. Look, they're offering eight, I'll take fucking eight. Yeah. (laughs) It it, 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 it basically boils down to this. Principles are principles, but $20 is $20, 20 right? (laughs) <laughs> 10 million dollars is 10 million dollars <laughs> yeah, yeah that, that, that's fuck me money you're like all right i can do something destructive to myself uh we've always said i've always said like from way back we're talking like in the first 10 episodes if we ever took advertising it'd be from microsoft because i would love to take some of microsoft's fucking money man yep. <laughs> then we just blew give us a everything. call microsoft we, we can work great. something yeah. out be, yeah call me what is, so Micro, Mixer, Microsoft love, loves Linux, right? Yeah, that's it's for right. us too. Cut us that check, baby. Uh, we'll make <laughs> you me, baby. We'll, we'll misappropriate those funds hard, son. Um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I did notice uh, on this topic, real quick, is Twitch is doing their own uh, tubs. They're, I don't even know if it's going to be OBS based, but they're going to try to make it even easier for people to make horrible streams. Yep, they're, they're developing their own streaming software which is windows only go figure fuck this wheel let's make a better one that is less functional good on you twitch uh and I mixer mean, OBS is a thing it works everywhere what the hell <laughs> uh apparently mixer is what is it's twitch to electric boo it's microsoft's twitch well it was another company before that microsoft just bought it microsoft didn't fucking make something come on 
Dog. <laughs> I don't know who owned them before that, but it's Microsoft it, now. It, 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 was, it was originally called Beam, apparently, That's according it. to Wikipedia. Right. I remember it because I was like, oh, we could stream to that too. And Microsoft's like, mine, I made this. <laughs> okay. Good luck with that, ladies and gentlemen, because on that bombshell. Yeah. Let's get the music. Oh, yes. <laughs> For the 300. And 64. Fuck mothering time, you beautiful people. Um, I'm old man Vin, Vin Stone on Twitter. That's where I hang out at Vin on mast.linuxgamecast.com. That's kind of my personal thing. I try to stick the business in the front um, on the Twitters if you want to get a hold of me. Or send me some hate mail. I love to or call me, which you really can now. Yes. Send them some dirty texts. I'm Jordan Swung. I'm twisting all my panties and dumping them in something or other. At Twitter, I'm at the Burning Fool or Mastodon. I'm at Frojo on Mastodon.linksgamecast.com. And I figure someone has to mention it. This uh, is episode 364, which means the, this what, is what, our what, 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 seventh what just year said? anniversary. Is it? Yay! Yes. Oh, the, the, that, fuck. That's seven. That's seven years. Uh, so, hey. <laughs> well, thanks. You know, uh, Jordan and I spent all week in fucking therapy repressing the fact that that was coming up. Patreon does it right at the end. Oh. And accounted for on Twitter. Let me know just uh, uh, how much monster. I interview. you. <laughs> Speaking of monsters. <laughs> oh, man. These, these awful, awful creatures who keep giving us money, forcing us to stream every weekend we gotta keep being we awesome. gotta blame we gotta we gotta blame these folks mm. who are they we'll find out in a second once the <laughs> scroll goes by they are the they are Arthurin, mr fox dog empty the atomic ass mike g bob ramt aldeus haplo mac geek scoots Scoot. and Scoot. then the rest <laughs> Boom. Oh, surprise. Seriously. Maybe was, yeah. <laughs> surprise Frank. Oh, surprise Frank. He, he was excited, you know, being our seventh year anniversary. He couldn't contain himself. Uh, Rudy Jordan, Evandro, <laughs> Idro, Michael, Egal, Melingston, Mr. Alert. Hey, Corey, Grayson. You guys Massimony, are welcome to Luke fucking help you. here. Grayson, Joey. Uh, Mini Jack, uh, Fraser, uh, oh, Dung, Winnixter, Sorceress, Vertnog, J-Girl, Grongadonga, Longadonga, Mike G. Mike G well, leading the yeah, Frank's yeah. fuckos. <laughs> if, 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 if you want to take up the last slot on the fuck wall, you can buy some stuff off our wish list. Go to linuxgamecast.com, go on the list, wish list links, and buy me some lube or yeah, a butter that infuser. on the fuck wall. It's going to be for the studio, son. You can borrow, get a Frank of your own, motherfucker. <laughs> All right, I'm putting I'm putting a new skeleton on the wish list will, then. See, his name Frank's will be like, Frank. Fuck that. Frank, you better yeah. not have left me, son. Come back. Get, Frank, get, back, get, get back, back here, here, you piece of shit. God damn it, Frank. <laughs> I, I guess Frank is moving to Canada now. See what you've done. So, so that's basically <laughs> like installing Linux anyways, so. Dan all the fires. We love you. Bye. Peace. <laughs>